Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we'll be refocusing on the second chance recent buff and why now is a perfect time to give them a try again. We have covered the following multiple times as it has an interesting concept to them, but did terribly with executing it. Now though, the Exotic has received a wide number of buffs which I find to be very good in the long run and thought why not show off how good they are with an all-rounder build. It covers a number of key things needed to make them viable in in-game and allows players of all types to pick it up and customise to your liking. Sweet, simple, so let's make a start. For aspects, you're going to want to have Bastion where casting your barricade or super grants an overshield to you and your allies. Loss of overshield from damage will slowly regenerate over time. Then you want offensive bulwark where upon having overshield, your grenade charge faster, you have increased melee range and damage, and melee final blows extended duration of overshields. The Aspects effect will focus on providing users a best of both worlds in terms of damage and survival. Flexible in design, the final product will allow users to make full use of their melee and grenades to create a synchronized nature of empowering each other. The fragments used are Echo Instability, where getting a grenade kill will grant Void Weapons volatile rounds. Echo Persistence, where Void buffs applied to you are increased. Echo of Exchange, where melee kills grant grenade-based energy on enemy ranks and Echo of Provision, where damaging targets with grenades grant melee energy. Both Echo of Exchange and Provision will be the two key fragments that you'll be relying heavily on to support the build. With no melee support coming from Monte Carlo or Puglis involved, we will need to make sure our stats are strong enough to support the two fragments and vice versa. Because of the modding overhaul, we can easily support fast speed to regen without the need of sacrificing too much in the making which thus allows us to use whatever weapons we like. Having the Echo Instability Fragment will be huge, plus with how much of a damage boost it will provide with our selected weaponry. You can also just focus on Repulsive Brace set up instead to make full use of our fast speedy regen via overshields, but this will be left to the user's desires. For the mods and stats section, we will want that high discipline strength stat that will focus on empowering the two. You will also want to have a high resilience stat so we can make use of the Bastion aspect. Discipline at tier 7 is recommended to start, and from here you'll then want to add the Font of Focus mod for a plus 3 towards the given stat and overall achieve a tier 10 once active. With the Echo of Exchange in play, our stat will get around a 53 second cooldown, which can be less depending on the enemy tiers we defeat via our grenades. You'll ideally want to be using grenades that already have a fast cooldown rate, just so you can use them again and again, so Scatter, Magnetic and Suppression will be the top 3 to choose and use. Strength will be following the same logic here at being at tier 7 to start and then applying the font of Vigor to get a tier 10 stat once active. Our stat currently will come at a 46 second cooldown when using our shield foam but can be reduced more once Echo Provision is active. Because of the nature of the build, we only have Orbs of Restoration and Reach available that will be supporting the mini recharge rate once in play. This should be the same as we will be using our grenades quite a bit to bolster our mini recharge rate faster than normal. All of this will ultimately help with making the build less reliable on key gear such as Monte Carlo. Resilience is recommended to be as high as possible, with tier 10 being the best outcome if achievable. If not, then tier 7 to 9 is fine as well. At tier 9, we will get a 1 minute 5 second cooldown for tall barricade and a 27% damage reduction which allows us to survive GM level one shot snipers. The next section covers armor charges and additional mods within the build. We have Charged Up which allows for an extra armor charge slot once active. To support the armor charges further, having the Harmonic Cypher mod would give you the most simplest way of creating orbs of power to empower armor charges when in play. This will help with weapon bonuses being applied where Times 1 Void Surge mod will grant us a 70% damage buff for void weapons. Adding the Time Dilation mod for increasing our time based mods and the Powerful Attraction mod for collecting orbs of power faster via class ability and that will set up the main basics of the build. Lastly, with the heavy weapon being used, it's recommended to have Ammo Finder, Harmonic Reserves times 2 and Void Scavenger mod on hand to help with dealing heavy damage against the boss faster. For weaponry, we have the Lumarc Azotic Bow, one of the best Void Azotic Bows in game. The following can be used in pretty much any content you like and do extremely well in them. It requires little prep time, does very good damage, has decent DPS and now can stun overloads with a single charge hit. 
I don't mean to gloat, but this weapon is quite honestly amazing to use and it's definitely a must have for all players. In this build, it works very well with stunning, as spending is AoE effect into groups, and since our build does not need a melee regen mod to support our key exotic, you can get away with using something that provides a good follow up in terms of damage and speed, like shown. For heavy, we have the retrofit escape aid with a target lock and 4 times charm, and this is something you can get by watching Banshee rotation rolls every now and then. Although not as busted as the one time where it could delete bosses with volatile rounds active, the following still holds weight in taking down champions and bosses alike. This roll is a crafted version which not everyone can get, but because of how flexible the build is, any void weapon is good to use here. A Shattered Cypher is a good alternative that gets sold by Banshee every now and then, but doesn't come in close in terms of similar perks. However, with how we can buff our weapons easily via Surge Mods alone, and use of our super, this should be fairly enough for a new light to do well with. Now, this exotic when it was first released did fail at first to appeal to players with how weak its overall sort of effect was within its introduction. After a number of buffs, it has now reached a level of satisfaction that I and many other players can agree that it's worth using now. Just from last season, the exotic received a buff stating the shield throw will now weaken targets upon hit, while also stunning a barrier champion with them will grant the user a full mini charge back. So now the exotic grant uses a full mini charge upon barrier disruption, weakens, grants two mini charges, and break champion's barriers in one hit. This should supposedly make the exotic easy to use and active in whatever content you desire, and it does do a fairly good job of it. With that, I have created a setup around them to where you don't need to heavily rely on key exotics such as Monte Carlo to continuously buff our melee regen rates. You can use them of course, but it's not really required, with thanks to the modern system major overhaul. Relying on the aspects of fragments that focus on defense and granting ability energy back is the best way to make this all rounder setup viable in all content you like. It requires little heavy requirements to carry it, and just using two key mods will be enough to support yourselves from start to finish. It also provides good damage for any encounters, with Le Monarch and Retrofit Escape Aid doing a lot of the heavy lifting for the user. These can be swapped out as you please, as mentioned earlier, it's an all rounder flexible build. The buff towards the exotic is more than welcoming with how little most exotics in game offer. If you ever want to try these out but never knew how, then this build as a starting point will help you understand everything that's going on and more. Once you get a rough idea, you can then change the build to your own liking, and perhaps add Monte Carlo if you like. But quite honestly, the exotic is in a better phase and general place currently, and you should give them a try. As of now. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub by here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.